Hi, my name is Holly Tanner with the Herman and Wallace Pelvic Rehab Institute, and I have asked one of my best friends in the whole world and, you know, frequent teaching partners, Stacey futterman Toriello, to be with me today to interview me about the men's health course. Stacey. So welcome, Holly. Um, I would like you to tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the aspect of men's health and where it all started. Mm -hmm. Well, I was treating a lot of women's health as we often used to have as a kind of a marketing umbrella and also, you know, clinical care for working with folks with urinary issues, pelvic pain, pregnancy and postpartum issues. And then one of my frequently referring urologist, Dr. John Ferrer down in Olympia, Washington, um, he started just sending me all of the patients who had any kind of urinary issues. And so I very distinctly remember the day I was at the front office when a referral came through for treating testicle pain. And I thought, what in the world am I going to do with the testicle? Am I going to touch the testicle? Now, keeping in mind, I, I think if folks are coming out of school now, or if they've had an opportunity to take pelvic health courses, that doesn't sound like such an unreasonable request or idea. But to us, you know, when we went through school, there, no one was talking about palpation of the pelvis beyond very carefully and discreetly palpating the superior margins of the pubic bone and such, you know, and so, and so I did start treating a lot of these men with pelvic pain and urinary dysfunction. And uh, I was fortunate enough that there was a, a course that Laura Fraser taught for the APTA at one point. And uh, she had folks, she had men come in and we were able to do pelvic muscle assessments on them and treatment. And of course, through her sharing her success stories, and then through a lot of the, the body work training I'd had, I found that if I simply helped especially with those who had pelvic pain, if I simply worked on some of the large muscle groups, got them aware of any holding and tension patterns, and then worked with, uh, again, just a lot of external techniques, uh, whether it was deep abdominal wall, hip flexors, glutes, things like that, that they got better. Most of them did. And so that's how I got started. And then I think with a lot of the additional knowledge we were able to gain with our training with folks like Kathy Wallace and Holly Herman, um, you know, we were just putting more pieces together. Do you remember that phone call when I called you up before we ever met? I said, hi, I'm Stacy. Would you like to present a two hour lecture at the American Physical Therapy Association's annual meeting in Denver Mm -hmm. on men's health? And you said, yeah. And do you remember how long it took us to create a two hour lecture? <laughs> what wasn't it about six months? <laughs> yeah, literally six months. And of course, Where we had no Zoom. We weren't able to, I don't even think we were able to really share what our PowerPoints look like. I, I'm not really remembering if we were able to actually physically do that. What I remember so, is we would take our phone and put it next to our computer, and then yeah. we would even have to break the PowerPoints apart because email wasn't even that great at sending them uh, right. with all of our anatomy images. So yeah, it, it took months and months of us doing these shared phone calls. So how long have you actually been doing this for in terms of men ha- men's health? How many years? Well, I've been a physical therapist almost 30 years. And then I be, then I took training to become a licensed massage practitioner as well after being a PT for, for a while. And so really in earnest and with a large degree of volume, uh, it was probably in 2000 when I really started seeing a lot of folks. And there were a few years of my practice uh, when I was in the Olympia area that I said, you know what, if if the person doesn't have a pelvic health condition, don't put them on my on my caseload. And of course, at the time I was working in outpatient orthopedics. And so I was very accustomed to seeing backs and necks and knees and post-surgery and you know, all of the, just the typical things that comes into an outpatient orthopedic clinic. But I knew that at that time, there weren't many of us doing this work. And I wanted to make sure I was able to serve the community in the best way that I could. And so uh, what was nice is I had so much volume 
of different conditions that it really allowed me to fail, right? To to look for answers and results and to discuss cases. And, and certainly, as I know you would agree with, the patients teach us so much, right? When they say, can I show you right where this pain is? They're, as they're reaching up into their groin and you're thinking, sure, <laughs> you know? And then you go back to your anatomy books and start thinking through, well, what structure is there? Is that, you know, is that skeletal muscle? Is it smooth muscle? How could their low back be influencing that through the nervous system, et cetera? And then uh, look hey. to other folks that they're working with to see like, is acupuncture useful to them? Is, you know, how much movement training do they need versus just some awareness and release? So it's been quite a while. Yeah. And when we, when we made co-wrote the first course, we focused a lot on anatomy, a lot on post-prostatectomy and pelvic pain. And that was really our structure. What has changed in this new revised version of the male class? What can people expect to get in terms of objectives from this newer version of the male class? Mm -hmm. You know, you'll also remember that we talked a lot about sexual health because so oh, many, you know, so many yeah. of these folks, when it comes to the prostatectomy, you know, they're saying, okay, now that I'm not leaking, what about my sexual function? What can I expect to get back? And, right. and what does this look like? And what I often found, we never had quite enough time to explain to people or show people were some of the hands-on techniques, because right. there's, I think when we teach and we can have some areas in which we make assumptions, we can say things to our participants like, um, and then, you know, you just screen the hip and then, you know, you do a neuro scan for the lower extremities to make sure there isn't a space occupying lesion in the spine or something. Right. That right. Make you right. Right. But we want to remember that people come from different environments and people have different strengths and, and fears about what they do or don't know. And so for some of our participants, we would say, and then you just do some soft tissue releases to the abdominal wall and to the perineum and the glutes. And they look at you and sort of nod along, but they don't really know what that looks like. Right. And so being able to add in a lot more of the manual therapy piece was very helpful. And then as the therapy progressed to looking at the scrotum, at the spermatic cord, the penile tissues more, more distinctly. And some of that hands-on work became part of what we were considering. Then it needed even more space and more room. And that's one nice thing that this online versus two days in-person Zoom has allowed us to do. Right. Is to really, you know, show some of those skills. And then a lot of folks, if they're not at a satellite location, um, uh, we know that a lot of our physical therapists who attend coursework and, and OTs and other providers they, who come to the Institute identify as female. And if they don't have a partner or a satellite to be within, a lot of them are, are bringing a life partner as their model. And so they just, you know, they'll say like, Hey, honey, <laughs> come here. You know? Being a yeah, it's yeah. great. So that's been really helpful in terms of them being able to do some palpation. And then with the advent of, you know, having a lot of different medical models, meaning like plastic and silicone and all these different things for people right. to really practice and visualize and, and, and things like that, it's been very helpful for them. That's great. That's great. What do people need as a prerequisite? So could they come in as a brand new newcomer to pelvic health? Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm thinking of this as possibly a male physical therapist that wants to get involved in treating men's health. Mm -hmm. um, who needs like, and, and they don't have any experience. They might be an orthopedically trained physical therapist, or can it be anyone? Could it be this, that, that this is their first class? So that's a great question. And when you and I were first building this two-day course, we had the advice of Holly Herman. And she said, make it a beginner level. Yeah. You know, don't, don't have any particular prerequisites so that folks can come into it, especially therapists who identify as men who may not have had interest in or are currently treating vulvovaginal conditions. So they wouldn't have had any training yet specific to pelvic health let them, 
use this as an entry point. And then of course, folks who do know uh, some of the techniques or some of the philosophies, they would be coming in as well. And wasn't that brilliant advice that we got from Holly? So brilliant, because as we know, over experience, there might be people that identify as a male and only want a male therapist to be treating them, whether it be for religious reasons or personal reasons that they feel more comfortable. And, you know, a lot of the male therapists might be very intimidated um, in coming into pelvic floor one and pelvic floor two A. We recall we've had some participants that were the one sole person identifying as male in the class that say they're here to break up our girl party. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right? Absolutely. So it's great that we can invite people because as we know around the country, there's not many people still doing it. Mm -hmm. And some people have to travel miles and miles to get the care that they need. Right. And especially when that traveling is what often is setting off their pain experience, right? And Mm -hmm. so to answer that question, folks can come into this course not having had any training in pelvic muscle evaluation. And it does create a challenge and also an opportunity in this course, because some folks might be thinking, why are you telling me the basics of doing an internal, uh, you know, rectal muscle mapping? And other folks are thinking, ooh, tell me all the details. I've never heard this before. And so it it creates that challenge of blending the beginner level with the intermediate and sometimes the advanced. You know, when someone comes in and says, well, um, I've got someone with post-prostatectomy and pelvic pain, and therefore they're having a hard time doing their strengthening with that anterior continence mechanism focus because they get this sharp pain that, you know, that whole casket of things going on. And therefore it really allows us to blend the, you know, again, those basic skills with the foundational pieces. And if we keep in mind what we know to be true, that many of us, when men would come in to clinical practices in which we might've been treating a lot of vulvovaginal or peripartum conditions, we would think to ourselves, well, if I haven't had any specific training, I'm just going to use what has been working for everyone else and try it and see what happens. What happens. <laughs> yeah. And now a lot of those folks, when they take this, this course, they end up feeling like, oh, I get it. Or here's where yeah. things are a little different. Or here's where the research right. illuminates how we should approach this that is slightly different when there's a longer urethra or whatever. Right the anatomical shift might be. So yeah, so that's been really fun to have folks um, and particularly in the satellite clinics or when we would teach in person, it was so nice to look at someone who had a lot of experience and say, this person has never done this before. Please lend your wisdom and your skills. And there's always such a nice exchange that can go on between those parties because um, whenever you're teaching, as you know, boy, it really makes you think through how you do process information and how you do explain it to someone else. Right. Totally. Well, what else do you want to share to people that are thinking, should they take the mail class? Mm -hmm. You know, what I think is so important is understanding a few different domains within men's health. One is that whole prostate aspect, because whether someone has prostatic growth or quote unquote prostatitis or post prostatectomy issues, they need to understand that, that, that part of the urogenital system that most of us never have any training in. But they also need to understand sexual health, which also it's like, did, did you ever learn what an epididymis was until we started doing this work, you know? And why someone might have an epididymectomy or when they've got an, you know, epididymitis. It's like, What are these structures? What is their functional role in the body? What might they be mimicking in terms of other musculoskeletal pain? And so again, having that opportunity to really understand some of those anatomical pieces around the prostate, around urinary health and function, around sexual function, but then also pain. Because as we know, pain in and of itself, especially in the urogenital area, can cause urinary and sexual issues. So if you come at this thing, I know about the urinary system, I'm, I'm solid. You can't quite put all those pieces together. And then even when you look at pain, 
you know, one of the topics that I've seen a lot of folks for is pain at the tip of the penis. Well, is it local? Is it in the urogenital triangle that it's originating from? Is it coming from the lumbopelvic spine and those nerve roots? You know, there's, there's a lot to tease out. And then even if you feel like you get a sense of what's going on, what are the layers of pain and dysfunction and postural challenge that this person now has because of that pain? What's the right. fear that they have, you know? Yep. And, and so it's sort of like teasing out those different pieces and understanding how they affect each other. And that's what I really like about this class is if you understand the foundational aspects of a lot of this work, then you can start plugging things in together. And then of course, talking about all of the, the fantastic research and experiences that our colleagues around the country, around the world have had and mm-hmm. sharing their thesis work or their clinical work. And, um, and that's really fun too. Yeah. And I think when we originally did this class, we not only wanted it to be a beginner class, But we also said, well, if you took pelvic floor 2A, which gives you a tasting, Mm -hmm. really, an Mm -hmm. introduction as well to men's health, Mm -hmm. this now expands on it, wouldn't you say? And so now this is like, it might be a little review. So if you've taken pelvic floor 2A um, and now you want to just, you're seeing some men, this is now where you can expand your knowledge on it as well as a review. Wouldn't you say that? And and even better than when we wrote it. So you've really put all your time and energy into this. Well, and as frustrating as a participant as it is to hear, and we discuss this in the next course, it's just as frustrating for us as instructors, because we do want to tell you all the clinical pathways to consider, all the possible resources. We want to tell three great patient stories. And, um, you know, and I think, when we when we are discussing patient stories, I know that it was really um, for you and I even just as you know, even though we work on opposite ends of the ends of the country, we would discuss these patients and we would get our anatomy books out and we would pull things up online and say, yeah, but you see, oh, look at this bulbo spongiosis muscle, right? How could that be affecting someone? I always think of that case you shared about the the young man who'd had a circumcision as a young teen and then ended up with some some pain after that. And also as an instructor, what I really enjoy is sharing what our colleagues have told us. And of course, since you and I have taught two-way in the men's health course for such a long time together, I'll say, well, faculty member Stacy Futterman would share this story or mm-hmm. I remember this clinical case that was presented you know, by my colleague. And Those are the things that I think not only stick with us as instructors to hear how someone else might answer a clinical question, but I think it sticks with the participants too. And it it is in those clinical stories that I think I have the most to impart, you know, within the course is when I can tell someone about a patient who came in with particular symptoms, what we did, how they responded, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So we have to say to participants, go out and take the men's health class. Well worth your time. And it's so much easier now than it's ever been to take classes. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? For sure. The access is tremendous. The access is amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Molly. Thank you, Stacey. (laughs) For sharing. (laughs) Excellent. We'll talk soon. Okay. (laughs) Thank you.